Hey guys, uh, welcome back to the garage. And today we're gonna finish up going through the ignition system and the engine tune-up procedure. So we're gonna start today by checking that we actually have spark going to all six plugs. And there's really two ways that I recommend that you guys do this. Uh, one is by using a timing light. This is the much easier way to do it, but I understand not everyone has a timing light at home. So you can also use a very, uh, inexpensive ignition spark inline tester and this is a little bit more involved but this is also a very valid way to do this uh, the way that i do not suggest that you guys do this is a lot of times people just unplug the um, wire as the car is running uh, i do not suggest that you do that for a lot of different reasons uh, one being for your safety you don't want to shock yourself and two, it's just not that great for the engine if you just go about unplugging things uh, while the car is running. So we're gonna go through the timing light method first. Let's go ahead and turn on the car. This is really the easier way to do it, but if you don't have a timing light handy, um, you can use this uh, inline spark tester. And this is really simple to use. All you have to do is start with the, the first spark plug and connect it at one end, connect the inline tester to the other one. And you want to do this, of course, while the car is off. You don't want to be doing this while the car is running because, you know, don't shock yourself. What you should be able to see is light flashing right here at the indicator. And that's all there is to it. So we'll start the car back up and see if we can get any light. And that's all there is to it. So you wanna turn the car off, plug the first spark plug back in, and just move on to the second spark plug. Turn the car back on, check for light at each of the six cylinders. Obviously I'm not gonna go through all of them, uh, but you get the point. So we just checked that we have healthy spark going into all six of the plugs, but let's assume for a second that this thing didn't go as smoothly for you. Uh, there's a variety of different problems that you could have seen um, while you were turning on the car and checking for spark. Let's assume that the car did start, but it's idling really badly uh, and you don't see spark going into one of the plugs. The first thing that you should check is the wire itself that leads to that plug. And what you should be looking for is any unnatural kinks, any damage to the rubber coating, uh, and especially burn marks because these things do get burned if they're not placed correctly. And if there's any doubt to the condition of the wires, you should know that the wires are a wear item just like the spark plugs and your oil and fuel filter. So it's not a bad idea to just replace the entire set at every tune-up. The second thing that you should check if you're not getting spark at one spark plug is the distributor cap, which I'll show you in a second, but basically there's six metal nodes on the distributor cap and just make sure that they're all clean. Because if there's any contamination on one of the nodes, you're probably not getting a good uh, spark going to that uh, spark plug. 
A second potential problem that you could have witnessed is uh, a delayed startup. And I had a bit of that while I was starting my car. And there's really two uh, common problems that could cause that. One is the ignition switch, which can get uh, worn and damaged over time. And another thing is the ignition coil, which we also will also check in a little bit. But if the ignition coil is not, uh, doesn't have the proper resistance or it's not getting enough voltage, then you could also have a delayed start or even rough idling. Third hypothetical issue, the car doesn't uh, start at all. And you're convinced that there's something wrong with the ignition system. One common problem is that these spark plugs aren't um, plugged in correctly to their proper positions on the rotor. What that essentially means that you is that you've changed the firing order, and if any of the plugs are misplaced or switched with one another, the car will not start. And that could be the issue if you notice that the the, the spark plugs are getting uh, spark while you're cranking the engine. If you crank the car and none of the plugs are getting spark, then that's an issue with the distributor and the coil. Now, if your car has a lot of trouble idling smoothly, and again, you're convinced that it's something has, that has to do with the ignition system, it could be your timing. If the timing is too advanced or too retarded, uh, the, the car will have a tough time idling. The external resistor along with the ignition coil is, this whole thing is referred in the factory service manual as the ignition coil assembly. This external resistor, uh, which is also called a ballast resistor, is this ceramic bar with all of these connections on it right below the coil. And it functions to tamper down the voltage that gets fed into the ignition coil so that the coil doesn't get burnt up. Uh, if you can't find this or this uh, external resistor right below your coil, uh, most likely a previous owner removed it to use a non-stock ignition coil that has a resistor built in. And if that's the case, uh, this part of the testing doesn't really apply to you and you should figure out, I guess, your own method of testing out the ignition coil. So the first thing that we need to do is to check that the external resistor is getting 12 volts from the battery because if the resistor isn't getting any voltage, uh, your coil isn't getting any voltage either. So to check, we're going to first disconnect this first terminal of the resistor. So this is disconnected and we're going to turn the ignition to on. And we're going to measure the voltage going into the first terminal or the terminal that's closest to the front of the car. And to do that, we have a multimeter here. We're going to set this to measure voltage. Hopefully you guys can see that. And we are going to take one probe to this terminal or this connection. And we're going to connect another to a ground. And let's see what voltage we get. And you should be getting slightly above 12 volts. If you're not getting the full 12 volts here, you need to either check the condition of the battery or any of the connections leading to this exist, uh, external resistor from the battery. It looks like I'm getting the full 12 volts here, so now we know that the coil assembly is getting the full power. After you're done checking the voltage, go ahead and turn the ignition back to off. And the second thing that we need to check is that the entire ignition coil assembly shows the proper resistance characteristics. Uh, to do that, we're going to leave the, the first terminal disconnected, and we're going to move, uh, remove these two connections on the second terminal. Just set them aside. And you're going to leave these two terminals alone. And we are now going to change the, the multimeter to measure resistance. And put one probe on the first terminal and the second probe on the fourth terminal. The resistance reading that you're looking for is something in between 0.6 and 2.0 ohms. Um, as you can see, I'm reading something like 2.0 and 1.9 here. 
So anything below or higher than that range, you either have a faulty part or somebody installed a coil that wasn't suited to be used with your external resistor. If you encounter any problems here, uh, check out the accompanying deep dive video on the ignition coil assembly and I'll explain much more in detail. So the last thing that you wanna check is your secondary resistance on the coil and for that, you will need to remove the coil uh, entirely. So we're going to remove this connection here, going to the distributor. Set it aside and double check that your ignition is off. <clears throat> and we're also going to loosen up these two connections here. That's the wrong way. Now both of the terminals are disconnected and we are going to take our multimeter and put one probe on either one of the terminals and put another one inside the coil. So you are now measuring the secondary resistance and your resistance reading should be something in between 8,000 and 13,000 ohms and we're barely in that range here. So if it's outside of this range, you most likely need a new coil or another coil. So these three checks are really all you need to do to make sure that your coil assembly is working correctly. And now we can just reconnect back everything and follow the electricity to the next section, uh, which is the distributor. But before we talk about the distributor, I'm gonna just reconnect everything and make sure the car still starts so that I know I didn't mess up any connections here. It fired right up so we can continue. So the last thing that we need to check is the distributor and I've already loosened up the two clamps on each side to take the cap off. So you can pull it out and set it aside. And the distributor really is the, the most complicated component of your ignition system. So I don't really mean to trivialize its function, but doing a quick diagnostic on a distributor is really pretty simple. So you wanna start off by flipping the cap upside down. And as I've mentioned before, there's six contact points on the cap. So you wanna just make sure that each of the contact points are clean, that it doesn't have any corrosion on it. And if it does, you either want to uh, scrub that off and clean off the contact points or just go ahead and remove this entire cap. Uh, this cap is another one of those wear items that needs to be replaced, um, preferably at every tune-up. But I just replaced this not too long ago, so mine's looking just fine. The second thing that you need to check is the rotor. And uh, you need to check that the blade edge is clean and free of corrosion, and also the top, which um, touches the wire coming from the ignition coil. And again, if you have any doubts about this, just go ahead and replace it. And this is really not that expensive. And as far as the distributor itself is concerned, there's one thing that you need to check, which is something called an air gap. So the air gap refers to the spacing between the, the pickup coil, which is this thing right here, and the reluctor, which is this spinning, uh, spiky looking thing right here. So if you look really closely, you can see that there's a sliver of metal coming out of the pickup coil. And the air gap refers to the spacing between that piece of metal and the individual fins of the reluctor. So right now I can't measure that gap because it's not perfectly aligned. So I'm gonna have to crank the, uh, or turn the engine by hand to get that to align. Now 
now you can see that there is perfect alignment so we can get a feeler gauge and measure that gap. So the gap that we're looking for is 0.3 millimeters, which is this blade right here. And let's see if this goes in with just a little bit of friction. Yep, it's almost perfect. So the range or the tolerable range is anything from 0.2 to 0.4 millimeters. If you're towards the either end of that range, uh, what you wanna do is this is the screw that adjusts that air gap right here. So if you loosen up the screw, uh, the, you can actually kind of jiggle around the pickup coil to the exact placement that you want it. So just to make sure, I'm gonna try the 0.4 millimeter and see if that fits in. And it does not. So we are apparently at, the air gap is really pretty damn close to 0.3 millimeters, so we're just gonna leave that alone.